Welcome. So this is going to be a short overview of demographic trends, focusing on the causes, the consequences and the effects on family life. Now, before we get into this, what I'd like to say is just a, a well done to you guys. I want to say a big round of applause to you for all the hard work you're putting in, both myself and all your teachers have been incredibly impressed by the level of maturity and and sort of the nature you've taken on these these quite dramatic changes, and obviously in these ongoing uh, changes that are present. So uh, I just want to take a second just to, to congratulate you on that. I, I appreciate this is a very odd arrangement. So let's move into our discussions. Now, the first one we have are these concepts. There are lots and lots of key concepts, all based on page 74 in your pack. Now, what I would say is, is go through these concepts, have a read of them. I will reflect on some throughout this session, but ultimately reading is the key. There is a lot there. So take a look at them in your pack. Now, the first group we're going to look at today is birth rate. This is the first trend pattern that we're going to talk about. I'm going to summarize a few, summarize a few things on this page here. Now, the first one I want to start with are the concepts. The key concepts for birth rate is birth rate, which is the number of live births per thousand of the population per year, and fertility rate, which is the average number of children one woman will have between the ages of 15 and 44. Now, the general pattern of these is that they are declining. But I can see you asking, what is that small error about? What is going on with this change? Now, ultimately, the big change is that that birth rates are declining, they are going down, but every so often there is a, a slight increase. So if you imagine post-war, as you can see on the screen, there was a baby boom after war. Everyone comes home, they've had a few years of war, they've not been together, boom, hundreds of babies. Now, 20 or so years later, we see a secondary boom. In the 60s, again, you go back another 20 years, there's a mild increase in sort of the 80s and onwards into the 80s. Again, another 20 years or so pass, we see an increase and we're in around the point where we will probably be seeing another increase again. Now, this is my, this might be ripples following those baby booms or one of the things we're going to look at later is that it could be an effect of increased migration. So we're seeing a movement of people and that could be contributing to this. So why have these changes occurred? Why has there been a general decline? Now, the first is the change in general. Women are changing in society. They are they're more educated, able to work into uh, into the workplace. There's more choice. So this has seen a big change. And obviously, because women are into the workplace, because they're having careers, they're delaying children and having less children at later points. They can return to work or just choosing to remain childless. So gender roles has a big part to play. We've also seen an, a decrease in the infant mortality rate infant mortality rate. Um, so less children are dying before their first birthday, a concept we'll talk about in a minute. Therefore, families remain smaller because they don't need to have additional children. They don't need to have lots of kids and have essentially backup children in case a few die. Uh, we also see the cost of children. That's a big reason. Children are expensive, so people choose not to have them. And we're also seeing change in attitudes uh, within the family, so people um, choosing not to have children so and also the role of children changing and lastly contraception it's become more effective more available and that's also playing a big part in this now the effects on society is that we're seeing an increase in the dependency ratio which we discuss later there's a greater strain on public services which it sounds an odd way of saying it but it means that the decline in children means less need for schools and and healthcare services related to children that puts a strain on the service because it can cause redundancies because of the lack of need for them and we're also seeing uh, continued changes to roles agenda as, as women continue to enter the workforce and, and, and changes occur now the impact i've broken this down into two ways so on the family the effect of a decreased birth rate is that we have smaller child centered families, more time and emotional investment is put into the kids. The changing role of women again means that more women enter the workplace. They re enter the workplace after having children. So we're seeing greater gender equality. And again, this throws back to sort of de feminism to DDOL, which you would have already covered by this point. And it also adds to more diversity in terms of family structure. So we see a growth in single person households. We see a growth of childlessness, couple, couples who do not have children. So this is all beginning to change. And lastly, uh, the impact on society, if we have an aging population, and again, this will come up later in our discussions, but also the change in the need for services. There's gonna be a push towards providing more services for the elderly. 
so uh, a decline in youth services and education and a push towards more social and medical care for older people. So this is going to be a challenge for society. Next, we have death rates. Now, death rate is broken down into a number of areas. So death rate is the number of deaths per thousand of the population. Infant mortality rate is the number of children who die before their first birthday. And life expectancy is the average length of a person's life, as you may have guessed by the name. Now, the death rate is declining. This is not to say that death is inevitable, that death isn't going to happen, but the rate at which people die in relation to the population is going down. Now, the cause of this, there's a number of causes that show this. And again, you can see this table in the centre here indicating the, uh, the changes that are taking place, that this is general downward trend in the death rate. So the reasons for this, we have the beverage report, which brought in welfare, support, benefits, pensions, a lot of other uh, changes. Medical advances have had a big role to play in extending life and improving and curing illness. We have better hygiene and nutrition. In the current climate, hygiene is really important. And maternity care has improved. So postnatal, prenatal care for babies, and that's what's reduced the infant mortality rate. The effect feeds in, like birth rate, to dependency ratios going up. We see an increase in opportunities for older people in society. So there's more opportunities for older people um, in terms of employment, in social roles, in family life. So this longer life expectancy has changed the way we view older people. And in relation to the family, that also has quite a big pack impact. So we see more family diversity, as we've mentioned before. We're seeing extended families, beanpole families. Grandparents are having a much bigger role in family life, and that's adding to the diversity. Let alone other the fact that the elderly couples and elderly relatives can look after children, which frees up women and their ability to re-enter the workforce at a much sooner time. Uh, but puts more strain on the family itself. So the communities, the families will need to provide care for elderly relatives, particularly in light of stuff like marketization and privatization of healthcare, where the state does not provide it as readily as in the past. So the families have to take on that role. We see the growth of, of sandwich carers, adults who are caring for children and also potentially their own parents. Uh, and that uh, role of grandparents I mentioned in the families is mentioned by Bulky. Um, so again, grandparents are taking on more of a care responsibility. They're more involved in children's lives than they were in the past. Uh, and Charles, who I mentioned, frees up women to return to work, creating dual earner parents. And this forms the template of the neo-conventional family. So neo-conventional families have grown because women can return to work and provide um, sort of equal roles in the family to their partners. The impact on society as a whole, it puts a strain on public services. As you mentioned, more older people, that only changes healthcare needs. Currently, two fifths of the NHS budget, or 40% of the NHS budget, is spent on care for the elderly. As an aging population continues, that proportion will grow. So that puts more demand for homes and care homes to be put in. Social policy will have to be created. So we know the bedroom tax and other policies have been brought in thinking about this change. Uh, the grey vote is really important. So older people have significant contributions to voting patterns. They also play a role in economic patterns. If you think about the fact, you know, current elections with Trump and, and the Conservatives, the biggest proportion of voters are older generations who vote for uh, these kind of sort of right leaning parties generally. Uh, also, the grey pound has a role to play. So older people spending money and having an economic input. And lastly, discrimination. Now, as we get older as a society, as, as we have an aging population, we see discrimination legislation brought in to protect the rights of older people, to prevent discrimination and ageism, but it does still occur. Now, as mentioned a couple of times, you've got an aging population, and this does two things, having an aging population. So um, I'm going to sort of approach it in a slightly different way. So the aging population, the reason we have this it is caused as a result of obviously the birth rate and fertility rate dropping, death rate and infant mortality rates are dropping and life expectancy has increased. So aging population and dependency ratio are caused by these factors and, and within those, those elements that cause birth rate and death rate to drop, we can use as examples here. Now the aging population refers to the average age of the population going up, which we've seen as life expectancy increases, that's gonna happen. 
dependency ratio is slightly different. Now, this refers to the number of people who are working, the workers in society, who are providing economic support to the non-workers and, and dependents. So as we measure it in the country, the way we measure it is the, um, for every 100 working people, how many people are dependent on them? I think in the UK, the dependency ratio is about two to one. So for every 50 workers, sorry, for every 100 workers, it's around 50 dependents. And what happens, as you can see on the little graph, you have the dependent population on the right. So they depend on the workers who, when they get paid, they pay tax. And then that tax money obviously makes its way to the pension pots. And that's how it pays for pensions. Now, in an aging population, the issue we have is that as the number of older people increase, this will change the pay of workers. So taxes will have to go up on the working population to pay for this increased number of older people. However, the issue with, with having an increased number of older people is then the amount of pension goes down because there isn't as much money in the pot to share among members of that society. So the effects of this is that we see pension ages going up. We might see an increased strain on public services, as mentioned before. We might see higher taxes, lower pension contributions and an increase in care and roles for the family. And last but not least, our final stop for today is migration. Now, migration is about the movement of people. It's about people moving around the world. And there are lots of different variations and concepts we're going to flag up in a second. But also it's people picking up from one place and moving to another. So migration is movement. Internal migration is movement within a country. So if I leave Colchester and I move to Yorkshire, that would be internal migration. I've moved from one place to another. That's obviously moving and living there. It's not just moving and going on holiday for two weeks. Immigration is movement into a country. So the im or the in, I always remember it as in migration. So moving in and then m, e for exit, leaving country. Net migration is the combination of immigration plus emigration. And they work out whether there's an increase or decrease in movement. Natural change is to do with births and deaths. So amount of people being born, amount of people dying, does that change the population? And globalization, uh, this final concept, is the idea that we live in a world that's become more interconnected. And you can think about all the sort of connections between countries and all this idea that we're all interlinked. Now, the causes of this change is that we see more international trade. We see new technologies and increases in global media, which again, allow movements to be more possible. We see changes in transport. Transport has improved over time, which makes it easier to travel. We see political change, and we also have these concepts of push and pull factors. So again, a push factor would encourage you or encourage you to leave a country. Pull factors would draw you in. Now, the effect of this uh, creates more family diversity, which is a positive thing. We see an increase in population. We might see a strain on public services as we see more people come in. But often one of the things about migrant populations is they're often younger, more fit, more able, more likely to work, more likely to have children, which will alleviate the pressure down the line. Uh, now, the effect on family is it creates more LATs, this movement of people. Litwack talks about the modified extended family is likely to increase. We see dual heritage childhoods and it can have an impact on DDOL with globalization and outsourcing of division of labor and housework to cleaners and gardeners. Society-wise, really important for adding to our multiculturalism and our diversity. One of the really positive things about migration is we have diversity and one of the other things when thinking about society in recent events, our recent decision to leave the EU, the Brexit process has seen a decline in immigration and an increase in emigration. So it's reducing the diversity and that could make society more challenging in the future. And there we have our demography wrapped up in just under 15 minutes. Uh, thank you for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it, if it's helpful. Ask any questions or you know if you, if you need any help. And hopefully we'll be in touch again soon. Take care.